Hello everyone, welcome to another Tinfoil Tuesday. How are we all doing? Welcome. I hope you're all having a good Tuesday evening or whatever time it is for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Meek with 45 bits says Sam Bankman Freed's been arrested. Musk got booed off stage and Tesla's stock reached a new 52 week low. What a good day. It is a good day. It is. Gnome Pickles, thanks for 10 months, says I spent 10 months sub to Hannah and all I got was lots of laughs, accepted into a community of wonderful people, and a lot of joy. Can't wait to see what's coming up. <laughs> Overthought says based with a link. Let's see what it is. Dun, 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 dun. New Indiana state law lets citizens shoot police officers. The state now allows people to use deadly force to keep public servants from illegally entering their homes or cars. Police are not happy with the new law. Good. <laughs> if we're going to have a free-for-all with guns, at least it should be equal. Still not equal, but you know what I mean. Puka, thanks for 200 bits. And that catches us up. Almost on a hype train. It is Tinfoil Tuesday, so we are going to um, do a bingo. Get your bingo cards if you want them. If we get to level 5 of a hype train, we'll do all the tinfoil whoozy whatsits. We have so much to look at today. It's going to be interesting. Different stuff, too. There's a decent amount of flat earth, but the stuff we uh, have otherwise is pretty good. 
Chiba Hawk says tinfoil hype. Mr. Whiskers, thanks for gifting a sub. Kicking off a hype train. I need to figure out eyeshadow. Like, I, I like doing my makeup, but like, I always feel like my eyes look too pale. Like, I mean, I have a pale, pale shade anyway. I know that, but like, <laughs> I need contrast on my eyes, you know? <laughs> Any Peter updates? He still says the next part of his documentary is supposed to be out in the next month, but we'll see. Bumble Homestead with 200 bits says, I have mostly escaped Nutcracker season. Only one mini performance left. I am so tired. <laughs> I'm sorry. It'll be over soon. <laughs> Who's your friend? Thanks for gifting 10 tier 1 subs to the community. Thank you. Level 1 complete. It has been pulverized by Who's Your Friend's giftiness. Thank you for all of the nifty gifties. The Canadian Unicorn says, Hannah live stream just off work starting a good night. Oh, nice. Hope your work wasn't too bad today. Either way, it's over now. And you can watch some crazy people with us. Lily Love Stuff says, I only know about, I only know how to do two eyeshadow looks. People just assume I know what I'm doing because I always change up the color choices. I mean, <laughs> I have never taken any eyeshadow and put it on my eyes. That is how not, not fluent I am in doing it. I am not proficient in this skill. I've never tried it because I am afraid. 69% <laughs> to level 4 on the hype train. Chromatic Cuttlefish with 100 bits says, Speaking of which, I don't know if you heard, but some old school conspiracy cookers, prepper, sovsit adjacents ambushed and murdered two police officers who were making a missing persons check in rural Queensland, plus murdering one of their neighbors who turned up because they started a fire. Um, oh my goodness. Um, it's pretty grim. That sucks. Oof. Garf Shield, thanks for 100 bits. Tea with Goblins with 100 says, so we've had our first instance of conspiracy-related violence following a siege and shootout with the police. Four people are dead after a former um, principal and his conspiracy theorist brother and sister-in-law opened uh, fire on cops who were there to perform welfare checks on them. It's still early days, but I'm sure we'll get more details soon. Jesus. I feel like we're going to be seeing this more and more. So many people are unhinged. Sounds like the cats just got into a fight. Gnome Pickles with 50 bits says, I've been trying to experiment with makeup for the times when I feel female and constantly messing it up. Why did no one tell me it's like working a space shuttle? <laughs> it gets easier the more you do it. It gets easier the more you do it. Which is why I need to just figure out eye stuff. Because it's fine. I can do it. MSKTB89 with 18 months says, Happy Tuesday. Made it 18 months in addition to my second stream baby. I recently found out next summer I'll be having a real baby as well. I suppose I'll need names for both. Congratulations. Congrats. Um, I don't know if I can give you a good real name, but how about for this stream baby? This stream baby's name is... Malarkey Kerfuffle. Malarkey Kerfuffle. 25% to level 5 on the hype train. Retro Pastiche says, it's fucking awful. As soon as I heard the news, I immediately thought, sob sit fuck shit fuckery. 25% <laughs> to level 5. Let's see what we can find from this video. There is limited information that I will give you. I will make a statement. However, I um, cannot take further questions this evening. I will give you further information early in the morning uh, where media uh, will assemble at Chinchilla Police Station. It is with deep sadness... Canadian Unicorn, thanks for 100 bits. ...that I confirm the deaths of three people. 
including two officers, during incident in the Western Downs late this afternoon. Four officers attended a property on Waynes Road in Wyambilla in relation to a reported missing person from New South Wales. Tragically, while in attendance, two officers were shot and declared deceased at the scene. Hey, Colt Comics. A member of the public was also shot and is deceased. Another officer received a bullet graze and is receiving treatment in hospital. A fourth officer managed to escape the property and is also receiving treatment. The offenders are yet to be taken into custody. An operation, as I said, is currently unfolding at the location this evening involving Polair and Specialist Police. Our thoughts are with them during this... E Oof. Um, Tea with Goblin says, probably too long for a stream, but Tom Tanuki did a good rundown of the event. So you will probably... 18 minutes. I mean, that's not crazy. It's on the higher end, but like some of the stuff we watch is that long. Probably have seen by now that there was... 30% to level 5 on the hype train with a minute left. A shooting yesterday in northern Queensland in which uh, two police officers and several members of the public, some of whom were the shooters, apparently, and one of whom was just a neighbour, were killed. After having looked at... To, to, uh, one of the shooters online trials today, it became apparent to me that this person was, uh, if not a sovereign citizen, labels are a bit hard to apply here, then definitely um, uh, pilled in, in Freeman style or Sobsid adjacent stuff, along with a, a, a hodgepodge of other 40 conspiracy seconds left stuff. So I train. posted that to Twitter. So I thought I'd run through that and then kind of run through some of my previous work on Sobsids because I've done a lot of it this year. Um, and one of the reasons I did so much of it this year was because it seemed to me... I should probably say, I'll save this for Sob Sit Day, though. Duh. It is conspiracy-related, but it falls more into cons the Sob Sit thing. Bittergrin, thanks for gifting five tier one subs. Hydrate. Save for Sovereign Citizen stuff. Canadian Unicorn, thanks for gifting ten tier one subs. You guys fucking rock. Thank you. Level 5 complete. Let me put on my tinfoil garb and we can get right into it. Ooh, over level 6 even. How oh, nice. We can get the horns and the crown. Ow. Okay. Normally I'd play music or something right now, but I didn't think to, so I guess you just get to kind of silently listen to me put on a shiny jacket from the early 2000s. I'll look at your Twitch recap in a sec. Let's see, um, <laughs> 555 hours watched, 10,000 messages sent, 990 emotes, uh, 282,000 channel points. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's great. <laughs> Canadian Unicorn says Hannah ASMR. Now, some people really, really don't like that. I was going to do a gag and do ASMR, but no. A cult comic says, if we went to level 69, Hannah said she would eat a whole apple made of tinfoil on stream while listening to a nonstop dancing marathon. True facts. She wouldn't lie to me. I'm her sub-baby midwife. True. 56% <laughs> to level 7. But since we got over level 5... I do need to find my gloves, though. But since we got over level five, we will get into it, and that train can go wherever it is without my uh, conductor ship. It's a train just on its own. Uh, where are my gloves? There's a glove. Where's the other one? There's one. And there's the bandana. There's the glove. There it is. Oh, okay. 
<sighs> All right, let's start with. This one. The moon is flat. Nothing pisses off the globetards more than pointing out the obvious. The moon is flat. Everybody knows NASA's been faking the footage from the moon. It's obviously flat. When you look at the full moon, what does it look like? A flat disc, a pancake, a frisbee. It's flat. This does not count for flat earth on the bingo card. Unless he said flat earth first. Either way, flat moon is not flat earth, so. <laughs> Neither is it fake moon. If you want to know what the earth looks like, just look at the moon. Just look at these other planets that are out there. You can look at them with a telescope. How many of you know what a telescope is? Anybody? Me? <laughs> Everyone? It looks like this. And with these telescopes, you can see what's out there. What does that mean exactly? Minute it means we can see what's out there. And everything out there looks flat. And so it doesn't we're flat. though. It doesn't though. What are you talking about? What? We see other planets like you can see other planets with telescopes and you can see them change perspective over time because they're also moving and rotating. Like what? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's like Gnome Pickles with 50 bits says, wait, in the video he just showed, we saw the curve of the moon. Looking at yourself. He thinks it's a disc. Off in the mirror. You can kind of see yourself, but you can't see yourself like you see other people. But you assume that you look like them. And so it kind of fills in the blanks, but it's a real weird reality. Looking at yourself. And then looking at other people, knowing that you can't see yourself. What? But you're like them, inside your head. It's messed up. Word salad? You ever get that feeling that the world is messed up? What's going on? Well, just look through a telescope. It gets even weirder. Look at this thing, Saturn. The sixth planet in the solar system. Is it heliocentric, geocentric? The heliocentric. evidence suggests that it is in fact geocentric. No, it no it doesn't. We are at the center of the universe. We are not. And we are like all of these planets and these planets are like us. Circles, round. And most definitely, flat. That's flat earth on the bingo card. Anybody that's looked at these planets with a telescope knows that these things are flat. And so the earth is flat. Have you ever like seen photos from amateur astro photo astrophotographers? You can get photos and I I've seen people do like long like long exposure things with a tracking telescope of planets where you can clearly see them moving and that they're not flat. What are you talking about? The only reason you might even be able to make an argument that the moon appears flat is because it is tidally locked with the earth, meaning that the same side is facing the surface of the earth at all times. It's sort of like, you know, strafing around it, for lack of a better term. Um, so you're always seeing the same face as long as you're on the surface of the earth. So I guess then you could say from your perspective, if you're not thinking about it, sure. But no, you can actually look at it with a telescope and you can tell that it's a sphere when you see it with its texture closer 
what are you talking about? <laughs> you don't even need a particularly strong telescope. It's the moon. It's quite close relative to things in space. <laughs> There's overwhelming evidence of this. Check out this new footage from BitChute. Oh, bit shoots like upsetty spaghetti, by the way. A lot of these like things we see on BitChute. Um BitChute, apparently the bank has frozen BitChute's money because on their website it has all these things and they're trying to do some sort of like fund to save the website. <laughs> they only got thirteen thousand pounds so far. Two years ago, BitChute became the target of an activist group that attempted to shut us down by pressuring our suppliers. As a result, we lost some server hosting, our office space, and other suppliers. We also lost our bank account with HSBC, a bank account we had held in good standing and without any issue since we launched in 2017. We initially tried to open a new account with a different bank and transfer our money. However, the new bank rejected us just as the funds had reached them. Our money was returned to HSBC, but we could no longer access it. And even today, we still have not retrieved our money from HSBC. <laughs> oh. So that's funny. Ah, oh, where did the thing go? We're watching. There it is. Titled. Sorry, Chromatic Cuttlefish. Uh, Chromatic Cuttlefish says you can literally see about 60% of the moon over time anyway because it nods back and forth due to uh, liber l liberation. Libration? Pinhead. <laughs> the wall of Antarctica. We can see it clearly here. This video didn't get as many likes as the uploader intended for some reason. For some reason... People in the audience didn't like this footage. Flat Earthers did not like this footage. Why? Why? You can clearly see the snow. You can clearly see the ice wall. I don't even understand what he's trying to say is there. He thinks there's a wall? I unironically do not see it. <laughs> And so, this footage from Antarctica is just mind-blowing. Look at the firmament. Look at the dome. Look at it what's It literally going just looks like the horizon in the Arctic. ...going on. Or Antarctic. ...at the wall. Clear as day. And so, obviously, these globe tarns don't know what's going on. Flat Earthers have been proven right once again. It's like this boat on the horizon. And it just keeps sailing until you can't see it anymore. And then with a the camera, you zoom in and you can see it again. Have you seen that footage? It's awesome. It's like when the sun sets. And it's in the next time zone over. And you zoom in on it. And it's still gone. You can't bring it back like that ship over the horizon. Even though it's in the next time zone over, you can see it on the webcam. You can find webcam footage of the next time zone over. 2 plus 2 equals 4. You can do the math if you wanted to, but you don't want to. You're convinced that NASA is faking the pictures of the moon. And they are. It's obvious that they're faking the pictures of the moon. And they're doing that because the Earth is flat. No other reason possible. It's either... The earth is flat, or nothing exists. <laughs> False dichotomy isn't on the bingo card, but maybe it should be. Don't you understand? That's what's going on. 
And so, you know, people just have to wake up and smell the conspiracy. They've been lying to you. All the textbooks are lies. Every single one? Like math? Like I can't add two and two and make four? They say that the moon is round like a sphere. But how can it be a sphere when it's flat? It's not flat! <laughs> Checkmate, globe heads. <laughs> Chiba Hawk says either the moon is made of provolone cheese or we're all in the matrix. It's true. That doesn't count, by the way. Me reading someone else's message doesn't count for the bingo card space. And so, obviously people are confused. And they don't really want to think about it because they like the idea of the snow globe. It's safer that way. Nothing can come in. Nothing can go out. There's no need to think about meteors. There's no need to think about aliens. There's no need to think about the universe. We just think about what's happening inside our safe space. And so, that's good. The less we know, the better. We don't need to know. But it's obvious that these circles that we see through the telescope... They're spheres. When you look at a sphere from one specific angle, it looks like a, di it looks like a disc. It looks like a circle because you can only see from one perspective. When it's moving, as the planets are, though, you can see different sides of them as it continues to shift. Mike Mack says, funny how the flat earthers don't come together to fund a rocket or something to see um, if there's a firmament. But no, they just do this. I wonder if the guy who died trying to prove the earth is flat on a rocket scares these losers. <laughs> Probably. He died. Am I scared anyone like this will attack NASA or any of the astronauts? It's possible. But like, I don't know. They're not my number one concern in conspiracy theorists. Let's, let me put it that way are flat you might think they're round you might think it's like a basketball but this is an optical illusion you're literally showing i think footage of it rotating granite cuttlefish says i mean i hate to keep flogging this but you can see the shadows cast by the mountains and uh the crater walls which chance over which change over time as the sun angle shifts in exactly the way that would shift if you were illuminating a height variations on a spheroid. Forrest Espion says this guy would be horrified by this analog horror channel about an evil eldritch moon. Skip to two minutes exactly, you just need to see a few seconds of the creepy moon. Let me see. to move or something. Or is this it? Because I don't find it creepy yet. too subtle for me. <laughs> and yes, yeah, some of these things are rotating, but don't pay attention to the things that make you ask questions. Questioning the science is not allowed. Sir, 
science is questioning science. That's the definition of science, is it questions itself constantly. That's the point. First name bunch of numbers says, oh, they funded Mad Mike Hudgens. Then when he tragically died on one of these rocket flights they funded, they started spreading conspiracies against him. Sad that he died for their dumb ideas. Tragic, they immediately turned on him. Yeah. We must. And Forrest Espion says, Jake saw that channel's video on stream and had a similar reaction. Yeah, the creepy part was that the moon has moving living parts. Steve says the moon is not flat, we all know it's round, has a creepy face on it, and will hit the clock tower in three days. Let's continue with the doctrine and trust the plan. Otherwise... I've never played Majora's Mask. My first Zelda game was Wind Waker. We're going to... be divided. We're going to fight amongst each other. We don't need that. This is a cult, a sect, a religion. The universe is so small, it's basically non-existent. And everything is flat. Because in a three-dimensional... It's just funny to me that it's not even... This isn't a flat earther. This is flat universe theory. World. Only two dimensions are possible. And, you know, there's a lot of people that question the mechanics of flat earth seasons. And how the, the sun rotates around. And, you know, there's a lot of videos suggesting that it's impossible. But nothing is impossible. On the flat earth. <laughs> is that just your whole defense? Some say this is impossible and have in fact shown and demonstrated that it is impossible. But I say nothing is impossible. <laughs> You claim my argument is idiotic, but sir, nothing is idiotic. Checkmate. No one pickles says honestly, why would NASA hide things and how would they do so? This doesn't make sense to me. You're right, it doesn't make sense. And those people that point out the star maps, how is it that we have two different star maps for two different hemispheres rotating in opposite directions. Oh, you have to understand that. Do you understand that people in the southern hemisphere see a different... You don't understand why they don't see a different sky? Because they're, they're on a different part of the Earth. They're looking at literally a different part of the sky that you can't see because it's obscured by the earth that you're on. <laughs> Citosaur says, I don't think it registered my bits, but I have earbuds to listen at work now. Keep me awake, can I? I keep falling asleep because I slept like ass. I want to have, I wish I had like a bullhorn or something I could scream into the mic. I don't, I wouldn't do that because I don't want to hurt anyone's ears. But that's what evil me wants to do. Anti Pretzel says one of the conspiracies flat Earth is at least harmless compared to anti vax and such. They're all part of the same ecosystem. If you get into flat Earth, you're into the other things. If you're into flat Earth and you're not into those things, you will be because it's part of the pipeline. So I don't consider it harmless. It's it's very tied into a lot of anti Semitic conspiracy theories. Overthought says. Um, what do people on the equator see a mix of both? I genuinely don't know. You'd have to ask someone who knows more about space, an astronomer or something. Hydrate. It's the dome. It's the reflection from the dome. Hey, Mr. Blast. Some people would like to know where the dome is in the Bible. Well, there is no dome in the Bible. 
But the firmament is the dome. And yet the firmament is the heavens above. And so. It's best not to act confused. What you have to do is keep it simple. You look at all of these planets out there with your own telescope, forget NASA, and you say to yourself, are we the exception or the rule? When you look at other people, do you look like them? Or do you look way different? You have to trust your feelings on this. I know for many it's impossible to reconcile the obvious. You're past that point of no return. Nothing would make sense anymore if you were to actually think about what's going on. And so, undoubtedly, this footage will irk you, will make you upset. What did you walk into? We're doing conspiracy bingo. We watch conspiracy videos and uh, do bingo based on the tropes common within them. As it should. This video's done in like a second. I know this guy fucking goes because on forever. if you were comfortable with what you were thinking, this wouldn't make you upset. There's nothing evil about the observation. This is far from Sodom and Gomorrah. And so, go get yourself a telescope. Check out these projections in the air. Okay, even I'm done with that. Holy fuck. Let's take a quick look at the bingo card. Ah, uh, we got... I know we got Flat Earth. I don't think there was much else, if anything. Did they say... Did he say Babylon? No, he said Sodom and Gomorrah. We did have word salad. And we need flat earth. I think that's it. We did not have holograph. No one said the moon was holographic. He said it was flat. Not idiot thinks he's a genius. It's a little more specific than that. They basically have to explicitly call everyone else an idiot. They have to be like, I'm so smart, and everyone else is so dumb. Chris does it sometimes. Yeah, aliens don't count if they're saying they don't exist. It has to be aliens in a non-fictional context. What if I told you that many old photos have been photoshopped, but what are they trying to hide? Let's investigate. This is that bad world. This is that bad world. We already saw this part one of this world. some time back. This is that bad world. This is that bad world. This guy is the uh, red pill <laughs> MGTOW conspiracy theorist guy. Here, military operations. Maybe that would be good. Military operations, French goals. Okay, let's have a look at French goals. CNET American submarine, Russian by 14. Military operations, debarkation, debarkation of embarking in France. American troops on board and American transport as they arrived in France. A great throng greeted them. Okay, so again, I don't see the battle here. Obviously, this was the arrival of American troops so there is no battle here and what can we see in the background I cannot see anything in the sky because the sky is gone in this area right 
What? Does he think the fact that that American soldiers are disembarking here means there needs to be a battle? Soldiers being in a picture doesn't mean the picture has to be of a battle, you fucking idiot. <laughs> what? Oh my god, he's so dumb! Military operations. Let's have a look at this. Again, no battle here, just military operations. And nothing in the sky, obviously. Why what? Doesn't understand how cameras work on the bingo card. Why would there be? French girls give British soldiers a lift in France. So, um, there are these French girls, look, underage girls, and these adult guys need to live from these underage girls, right? I don't like the implication he's making right now by calling... <laughs> Does he just call all children underage... under? Because that's creepy as fuck if you just called every child like an underage girl or underage boy. Like, that is the creepiest fucking thing. The connotations are incredibly unpleasant. They're kids, what are you talking about? on this one mule cart in the mud <laughs> right and these people are just watching because you need an audience as well to make a good photograph i mean you can't make this stuff up seen at the american submarine chaser photos never have other people in them enjoying also watching the thing being photographed i'm a big brain waters in the mediterranean so it looks like to me that the Americans are just chilling out here. They are eating popcorn and they are probably playing poker or whatnot. And all of these, they look like actors to me. Symbol B. <laughs> what do actors look like as opposed to people in the Navy? I don't... <laughs> B.O. for Barack Obama again. And um, 1923, you know, where is the war? I'm still looking for the war. That's Does he think that war is literally fighting 24-7 every day, everywhere? Does he not understand that like a lot of war is just sitting there waiting for stuff to happen and maintaining things? What? <laughs> Let's have a look at this. Wreck, German, wreck of a German airplane with bomb. So, there is a bomb. And again, we can see the background was cut out. It's not cut out. It's just not picking up the sky very well because it's old photography. For some reason, it always has to be hidden. And there is a wreck. That doesn't prove the war. British trenches near Ypres, Belgium. And we can see some soldiers smoking and have a leisurely laugh in the trenches. But where is the fucking war? Nothing in the skies again. B.O. for Barack Obama, 1923. Balloons. <laughs> what are you talking about? Flights with ships in view. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Fleet view and kite balloon. Is he not, I, I, I would imagine there probably are photos of actual battles in World War One. But with cameras back then, it's really hard to take like an action shot of things happening and people quickly firing guns and stuff because the time it takes to expose the material to the cam to the light is going to be long enough at this period that like you're going to get a lot of motion blur. Like you, you can't take quick action shots, so battle stuff is going to be tough. Maps and Mimic says there's a reason hurry up and wait is such a common phrase in the military. It's common in Hollywood, too, for people sitting on set. <laughs> in 1918, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, here are photos of people in battles. There's motion blur, as I said. <laughs> the cameras back then made it more difficult to catch things in motion but yeah there are photos <sighs> january 29 so what can we see here again nothing in the sky no sun no clouds there is a balloon 
Sir, it's a black and white photo. There are some ships, and that's it. This is World War I, ladies and gentlemen. I can't see any proof of the war, but this is- Just all these warships and soldiers. I see no proof of a war. <laughs> Jake Thony, thanks for 100 bits. What they show us. Anti-aircraft machine gun of the 101 First Field Artillery. <sighs> right, German observation plane at Plateau Chamin des Dames, France. Nothing in the sky again, looks like cut out. And they are shooting at something, but it doesn't prove that this happened. It looks like... <laughs> Can, that, that's, a, that's an amazing statement from a conspiracy theorist. Can we just hear that one more time? Out, and they are shooting at something, but it doesn't prove that this happened. <laughs> Maps and Remix says, literally restored colorized footage from World War One. He would just call it all fake. He would call it fake. Um, Jake Thony with 50 bits says, whoops, next he'll say they always take black and white photos. Why are they hiding the colors? I mean, this is colorized anyway, so it wasn't captured in any way originally in color. When you go in and, and colorize things, you're making basically educated guesses. I do find colorization really interesting. I've seen some people do some colorizations of some old Doctor Who episodes that are pretty good, too. It looks like a- That said, if something's originally in black and white, it should probably be viewed that way. But as an experiment, it's interesting to see things colorized. Um, Lily Love Stuff says, Where is this guy from? Because judging by his accent, he can probably find some scars in the earth still from World War I battles in his country. I actually don't know. A setup scene. Military administration, transportation, rolling stock, rails, armored trains employed by French in some Somme district. So let's have a look at this. This is kind of like a um, military train, it seems like. And uh, I'm not sure if they are firing something here. Let's have a look at this guy. I'm gonna cut out background. Nothing in it's this. It's not sky. cut out, it just doesn't capture any detail. <laughs> Guy. No sound. It's a camera from like 1918. No clap. It's a camera that is over a hundred years old. Chemical warfare service drills miscellaneous reports of a German gas attack southeast of Arras. Oh, here's a battle photo. Remember when you asked for a battle photo? I guess here's one. Right, so this is the first thing that I would see this is a scene of a war, a real war. But this is a painting, it seems. Okay, cool. Right? This is um, 1111, so triple one, 1918, 911, 777. Gas attack photograph shows the attack on the outskirts of Aras, a village which has changed hands several times, and the last effort- It says photograph, but I'm wondering if it was just mislabeled, because it looks like a painting. It looks like a very realistic drawing or painting or something. Looks more like a drawing, maybe. But, like, it doesn't look like a photo. But ...of Germans to take and hold this place was under cover of a gas cloud after the usually heavy bombardment. Fierce hand-to-hand -hand fighting took place, each man fighting to pull away a German's gas mask. Right. Oh, it's a photograph of a painting. Duh. Holy fuck. So they are telling us that this is a photograph. Okay? This is a photograph? Give me a fucking break. Like, you have made a photograph of a painting. This is a fucking painting. There's nothing photograph about this. Right? I mean, just look at this. Go to the resources. Sir, so you can find pictures of battles, though. Just because this one is a painting and is confusingly labeled doesn't mean that battles didn't happen. You can see them. Occult Comics says footage of World War One, I, I assume. 
the one they didn't want you to know about, or was it supposed to be World War Zero? Also, photos were often painted over to highlight details during the early days of photography, just as a bit of detail on things. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> uh, it's all right. I have a feeling germs are going to come save the day. I've seen this one before. Sources and credits and have a look at it yourself. But here it is. I'm just enlarging it for you. Zooming in. Does this look like a fucking photograph for you? Because it doesn't to me. It's a painting. Okay. And they are telling us that that is a photograph. And that it happened. Bullshit. Okay, let's go further. Chemical warfare service. Equipment protecting horse and man from gas attack. Right, so the man has to be protected from the gas attack with this uh, gas mask. Right? And the horse has just like a sack pulled over his nose. <laughs> like, in which world, in which universe, which dimension does a sack protect you from gas attack? Poor little horse. <laughs> Look, so this is an actor. The guy's an actor. I'm not sure. Probably not. Irish Lily, Irish ex Lily says that's a feeding bag. It's not even a human being. Just, just some, <laughs> just some puppet. And the horse is an actor as well, right? Um, Tea with Goblin says, I wonder what this chud would make of the following photo of British British soldiers during World War II fighting Nazis while in drag. Obviously, the world work of the queer deep state Illuminati agenda. I've seen this. <laughs> oh. um, Raven says, I just found out about AI generated anime art and I found out that it cannot comprehend black people. One image turned them into a monkey, ew, and another just couldn't be bothered and turned them white with a black suit. It's one of those examples of how racism can be computer generated and how capturing technology always has problems. It's also kind of funny. Yeah, it's shitty. Um, it's shitty. The company, I think, is based in Asia, which is probably why Asia does not usually take into consideration, like, black people. <laughs> uh, with these sort of technologies, especially because that one, I believe, was developed for uh, the Asian market. Um, a marked feature in the German attack is the use of poisonous gas. Protection from the gas attack is not limited to the man only, but also to the animals they have. Photo shows how the mask is fitted over the horse's nose. <laughs> right, you can't make this stuff up. Chemical warfare service equipment miscellaneous, getting the gas out of the trenches. Okay, so how do they get the gas out of the trenches? So what do they do to do that? They are... I'm not sure what is this guy doing. What is he doing? He has a gas mask and he has something in his hand. So how do you get the gas out of the trench, right? You just have to wait probably. Only how did they get gas out of trenches in World War I? I feel like Google's results have been getting less precise lately. Am I crazy? Moira Soma says, Taking pictures in the middle of an attack isn't easy, even now. In the First World War, cameras had long exposure time. Not to mention it was very, very dangerous. People got blown up. Needs some kind of ventilation. But I'm not sure what he's doing here. And he's a lone guy in a trench. That's, what the fuck? Chemical warfare service, gas poisoning, degassing sprayers, machine for neutralizing poisonous gas. Really? Okay, that's interesting. So they have degassing sprayers, so they spray against the gas, <laughs> right? It's just, just like chemtrails, yeah? The Sorry, first name bunch of numbers. Says, I don't know what frustrates me more, his inability to pronounce European place names despite sounding European, or his habit of saying you can't make this up right after making shit up. <laughs> Gives you chemtrails because you are bugs in this fucking earth, in this fucking prison asylum, and you are the bug we have to get rid of you so we spray you with chem. And, well, that's what they are doing. I'm not sure. Like, 
who are the Germans? Who? Where is the gas? You know, like it's just just a setup scene, and they are putting out the gas with the gas. And give me a break, military intelligence. Yeah, I would imagine if you wanted to make some sort of toxic or poisonous gas inert, you would probably use another gas that interacts with it chemically and negates whatever's in it that's harmful. Yeah. <laughs> News information, warnings, French gas warning. Okay, so they are warning French people that there is um, gas danger here. I, I thought it was a mosque. Anyway, so he's holding what? gas mask. Um, KBS says poison gases are not stable. They break down quickly and the byproducts settle into the soil. When you dig up the soil and dispose of it to make the trench safe. My grandfather was in World War I and told me about the horrors of the trenches. This guy is making me furious. Thank you. And that's it. All right. So does it prove the war? Medical department, hospitals of the operations. Right. So these are the soldiers and there are the ladies and they are happy and where is the war street corner <laughs> what does he think war looks like in belgium let's have a look it doesn't look like a street to me anymore but there's certainly lots of mud it looks like a picture after the reset to me but we don't know how this happened because they don't show the battle where is the fucking battle second lieutenant george e stone signal corps united states army and then they show this picture again they are all in the mud like i haven't seen one picture where there was dry land dry earth all of it is in the mud flood right so <laughs> and and there's some kind of tartarian castle in the background tartaria on the bingo card and and this guy is just posing for the picture here and what else can we see Nothing is in the sky, just like usual. Medical department, hospitals. Streaming at the radio says my granddad fought in the war. The mix of idiocy, ignorance, and arrogance in this guy is just breathtaking. In theater of operations. Yeah, it's a theater, I agree. <laughs> and they have this march, they put this fake American flag there, and yeah, that's it. Nothing is in the sky. Arteria on the bingo card. All are happy, all are actors. United States of Actors. Squad of American soldiers listening to one of their comrades playing the organ in the half-wrecked old church in Exermont. So, this is World War I, ladies and gentlemen. They go into the church and play the organ. Yeah? It looks like a war to me, really. And it's definitely. It proof literally for does! What are you talking about? That. And what they do here is give you a narrative which you believe and they don't think that they have to justify anything so these pictures obviously are not here to prove that it happened because that is taken as granted but for those of us who are awake and question everything we are looking for the proof and there is no fucking proof German machine gun nest World War One, along with World War Two, are some of the most heavily documented events in human history like, not only can you go and get, like, a, a degree in studying World War II or World War One, that's too broad. If you got a PhD, it would be in, like, very, very, very specific things about one of those topics. Like, I don't know, uh, ship-based warfare in the South Pacific, uh, between 1938 and, uh, 1940. <laughs> right? That would be your PhD. It's a huge field. It's a huge field. <laughs> I just... KBS says images of the Battle of, um, Somme. Oof. War is scary shit. Um, Gnome Pickles says this dude has been lucky to avoid combat for his young life. And goody for him. My great uncles fought in World War II, which is only a bit after this. And our family had many pictures that look like this. Hmm and dead gunner okay so i'm not sure whether this gunner is dead it could be that he's dead i'm sorry but it could be just a hollywood setup scene you can clearly fake this but there is no battle i can't prove this columns of german like does he not understand that veterans of world war one and world war two lived well into the 20th century <laughs> i don't even know if the last world war two vet is dead yet <laughs> 
Raven says, I hate that these goofballs conflate skepticism with just not believing anything, except these that other conspir things that other conspiracy theorists say. Yeah, they think being incredulous about everything is all of a sudden skepticism. The last World War One veteran died in 2012. <laughs> Jeez. Meek says, if you were ever in war, Hannah, you'd be the sergeant who somehow succeeds even though you're scared out of your mind. Thanks? <laughs> Prisoners taken by Americans in the first day of the assault. Uh, sent me 2016 PhD thesis titled Opposition to the First World War in Wales. Yeah, you get incredibly specific study, like people studying things because it's such a huge topic in history. They shaped the entire world. The First World War directly led to World War II. Both events shaped the world as they exist more fundamentally than any other events in the 20th century. And to not believe these things happened is just insanity. It makes no sense. Everyone on Earth would have to be in on it. Every single person. A cult comic says, everything this man has posted, just holy shit. And there's another one. <laughs> Congratulations, that was one of the stupidest things that I've ever seen anybody post on the internet before. Congratulations, the bar is high cause people post lots and lots of stupid things, but your stupid thing was somehow the leader of the pack. You just said, I don't know what pronouns are, and I won't learn learning's hard instead of regurgitate a half-baked stolen opinion people like you make me sad 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 hmm yeah and um yeah, again, some more mud here, as you can see. Everything was in the mud flood, right? <laughs> I mean, what is this? They couldn't have a dry day? Where <laughs> Sir, I'm sorry that Europe's weather wasn't up to your standard on the day they fucking took this photo. Is the sky. Where is the sun? Where is the clouds? Where is the dry day? Looks like a m As everyone knows, by the way, it's really good when you take photos to get the sun in the frame of your photo. It definitely doesn't fuck up your photo. It's awesome when you have the photo directly in the f in the background. Yeah, that's great for your exposure level. Like your your. You Does he not know how anything works? Mud flood reset to me. American troops going forward to the battle line in the forest of Argonne, France. September 26th. Yeah, we have seen this one. Photograph of Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, Overthought says he must be a king. He doesn't have shit all over him. And again, we can see some kind of ether communication here. <laughs> so where are... It's a radio. Are they connecting to? Probably a radio. <laughs> they are connecting to this little wire here to connect to the ether. And he is uh, put here. No, I assume that goes up to like a little little radio thing they set up a little bit higher on the structure they're on. <laughs> Kermit Cuttlefish says, Of course everyone knows that the war is automatically put on hold until nice weather when you want to take photos of it. Mm. Raven says, He must be my cat because he's making a big stretch. <laughs> As an actor to show that they were communicating with someone, right? What is the ether? The ether was, um, at one point, was an actual scientific hypothesis. It was uh, disproven. Gosh, was it the Mickelson-Morley experiments that disproved the ether? I might be misremembering. Anyway, um, it was basically a, a substrate through which they believed existed everywhere they thought that the the the, the aether was like the how do i define this i'm not good at defining 
It's like the the medium through which everything traveled in empty space. It's like an energy thing. Uh, anyway, as it turns out, it's not real. Um, that hypothesis was debunked, but conspiracy theorists still pick up on it and use it for some reason. Nice. The town of... The medium for light and empty space. Thank you. Rennes, France. And we can see some more civilization reset here, but no battle. And obviously no sky, cut out background Photoshop job. Is it starting to get boring? Because I'm not sure. I'm having enough of this. I, I'm starting to feel like I'm not sure what I'm doing here anymore. Thought they called that dark matter? No, dark matter is matter that we have not, not identified. Moira Soma says, I guess you can fake pictures, but you can't fake the millions and millions of stories coming directly from the soldiers and the civilians who watch the war with their own eyes. This guy must be joking or grifting. This stunning lack of logic is too much. They shut the church in the ruins of a Neville furnished um, temporary shelter for American wounded, being treated by the 110th Senator Train. Right, so here are the wounded and it looks like a real scene, but where is the battle, right? We see... <laughs> it says what, that, hopefully not here. They're treating the sick here. Happened before, what happened after. Jesus Christ ascending to the heaven. All the fakery, all the Tartarian buildings demolished and destroyed in the reset. That's all I can see. Maybe I'm just biased. A Maybe. View of the ruins of Avocourt, situated just behind the American trenches before the Allied drive of September 26, 1918. Evercourt is now a pile of stones. Scarcely a wall is standing. France, October 6, 1918. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Let's zoom in here. Some more mud, because there is no dry day in the fucking World War. World I War agree. I was all muddy, okay? And there's nothing in the sky, because there was no sun, no clouds in 1918. All background had to be cut out. Photoshop job. Oh, people, how long, how long, how long? I'm just happy that most of you get it. So maybe I just don't need to do any more fake. No one pickle says I'm not a military strategist, but I just, but I don't believe that medical facilities are usually set up near front lines. But what do I know? Apparently history videos, because it's just so obvious, you know, all of this is fakery, right? You are giving me this. I do like the idea that he thinks that they took the time to Photoshop a bunch of pictures, but didn't think to like put something for the sky. Like, imagine if, like, obviously this looks like this because it's just what photos look like that back then. It couldn't resolve the, the sky very well, the details of clouds and stuff, because the subtlety and the shades and stuff probably, I don't know, just couldn't pick up on it, you know? It's a camera from over a hundred years ago. So it doesn't know how to expose dynamically, like, for the, the, the sky and, like, the ground and everything. But, like, I do like the idea that they're just like, I removed whatever we're trying to hide from the sky here. It's now a white void. Should I put something there? And they just went, nah, they won't notice the white void. <laughs> KBS says, I want him to go for a walk in the red zone in France. The area is where the soil is still so full of unexploded shells that cleaning them was determined to be impossible. Today, over a hundred years later, the red zones remain. Ooh, that's creepy bullshit picture and you're telling me that that was world war one I. I mean just give me a fucking break do you guys think that i should really make more videos on fake history honestly it's a it's a serious question german plane brought down in the orgone by american machine gunners right so this plane has been just brought down by the machine gunners right where is the sky where is this right there sun where are the clouds why was the background cut out? It wasn't. In fact, this photo looks really foggy. <laughs> you know, set up in Hollywood. Military operations, convoys, and round American soldiers cheer, perishing soldiers on the ship, and that's it. Is this the proof for the World War I? Private Shook trying to move mules, hauling an American ammunition wagon stuck in the road, holding up the advance of the whole column. Again, we are in France in 1918. Again, all of this mud. That doesn't even look like mud. That just looks like dirt. Do you think dirt is mud? 
Bellstar, thanks for 31 months, says almost three whole years, Stannis. I know, crazy, right? No, where did all that mud come from, right? I mean, you know what I mean. And where is the sky? <laughs> where is the sun? Where is the fake sun? Where is the fake clouds? It's all cut out because they don't want to show us. It was, it was in Hollywood, right? What else? Fucking idiots. Battery C, six field artillery. Six field artillery fired the first shot for America on the Lorraine front. A shell case flying through the air and a new shell sliding into the breach in the same fraction of a second. Beaumont France. Right, now, let me get this straight. The photography system back then was so not advanced that we can see people walking on the street. I've seen some of these pictures and I showed you in my previous videos and in this video as well. We could see some ghost people who were just walking or just moving because the exposure of the camera couldn't capture it. Yet, they were able to capture this. <laughs> possible that this person had some sort of like film that captured things better for motion i genuinely don't know you'd have to ask someone who's familiar with early photography especially in world war one someone with maybe a phd in world war one photography which i'm sure exists <laughs> tea with goblins is i know it's scraping the barrel to make fun of someone's accent but when he says machine gun it sounds like mushing gun and Gnome Pickles says military action leads to a lot of smoke and churned up dirt, sir. That's where the fog and mud combine that with a very old camera and photos fading with time. Altered Rin says, I've done film photography and you generally want to adjust for the subject of the photo. There are some things you can do to make the sky more visible, but it depends on the film type that you, um, to what extent you can do that. It's one of the harder things to do with film. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. Ridiculous lies, fakery. Oh man. And of course, no sun, no clouds, cut out background. You know what? I was so curious. I wanted to go to the page too. I said I won't, but I really wanted to see whether there is anything in this gallery that proves that there was World War I. So I'm going to open some pictures here and see what they can show us. American soldiers. On a PA front hurling a shower of hand grenades into the Austrian trenches. Italy. Nothing in the sky. Because the sun is gone. There's no sun. And um, nice scene. You know, like looking in the sky. And uh, there's no battle here. Night attack with phosphorus bombs in maneuvers. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? That would be a phosphorus <laughs> bomb. The thing just told you. Right, a very popular bomb. Po you asked for, like, where's the war? And then they literally showed you a photo of a bomb going off, and you're, like, laughing at it. What the fuck? Part of the casino, the former restaurant. American boys are always ready for a song. Okay, so... Did I hear from the guy who tried calling for a million-man march because he thought Ukraine was fake? I don't even remember which guy that was, if I'm being honest. There you go, World War I. American snipers, 166 infantry. It looks like a battle scene where we don't see the enemy. These people are set up again and we see just one side of the story. There's no battle. 148th American Aero Squadron field making preparation for daylight raid on German trenches and cities. The machines are lined up and the pilots and mechanics test their planes in France, right? That'd be cool, right? And obviously we have nothing in the sky, no sun, no clouds, and um, there's still some mud, but they found some place where there is grass growing, and they are just preparing. We don't have any pictures that the World War did happen, but we see... You just spent 18 minutes showing us photos of the First World War. Some proof that it was photoshopped, got out background. We don't have proof for the battle though. Treatment room for gas patients at American Evacuation Hospital. Show us people who look like soldiers. It was a historical man butt, but it was still man butt. So having a haircut. It. So we um, Skifazoa says, you're not real, Hannah, because I can't see the sun in your video. That guy is also fake. True. You con us. I believe that yes, what will happen because they got a haircut. And I believe this shit as well, obviously. When I was smaller. Now here are some more soldiers looking at a photo, 
Looking all fake. And that's it. That's it. That's it. That's World War I. British soldiers returning from the frontline trenches in Belgium. Again, all the mud flood, all the water after the flood. They don't have a dry day. And again, there is no sun, no clouds, because the background was cut out. It's from Hollywood. Hermanic Connellfish says it's an airfield. You can't fly a plane out of the mud. French troopers under General Gara. By the way, this is completely random, guys, but Baha and I, my wife, have been playing the game Grounded lately, and it's been so fucking fun. We finally got it so we can play at the same time and, like, good. Because we tried with her laptop and it wasn't running very well, but now she's been using my computer while I play on the Xbox downstairs. That game is so fucking fun. Hard ...with their machine guns among the ruins of Cathedral near Man driving back the Germans. I'm not sure where the Germans are. They seem to be set up on these walls that they just destroyed. And that's it. No sky, no sun, no clouds, no battle. Have we met spiders? Yes, we've fought and killed many a spider. Okay, medical department, first aid dressing stations. Who are they dressing here in these stations? So there are these wounded people. Looking at one another. Bittergren says, why does he expect the sun in the photos? Last I checked, pretty much every photographer wants the sun behind them. Like, that's like a basic thing. Even I know that just as someone who shoots videos. If you can, if you like have a window right here where my camera is, that's ideal. If you could get like the sun, like you want the sun on the opposite side so it can illuminate you naturally. <laughs> like you don't want... To face the sun. It would be like me... It would be like me shooting a video with like... Is this plugged in? Hold on. Like imagine if I shot the video with this... Just in the background. This is what he's asking for right now. This is what it's like. Imagine this is the sun. Because the sun is also bright. It's further away. But, you know. It's also brighter. <laughs> this is what he wants. Andy Pretzel says, okay, serious question to this guy. Do you seriously expect people with cameras to be standing out in no man's land and to be taking pictures of both sides? It was called no man's land for a reason. Also, cameras back then were not as powerful as they are now. The technology was still relatively new around that time. Yes, yes it was. Uh, I could tell you guys a spooky story. I just have to hold it down here. Mm hmm. Uh, Farquad, thanks for 16 months. I could, uh, rim lighting. Eh. Alright. Right. Uh. Woo! That's some bright. Bright. Ah! <laughs> I'm not sure what he is drinking. Maybe it's just some soup. And um, yeah, that's it. That's World War One. American troops on way to the front march through London amid the plaudits of the multitudes crossing Westminster Bridge. Okay, so still World War One. No sky, no clouds, no sun. Cut out background, as you can see all set up to look real. First to fight, a group of US Marines, US Marine Corps recruiting, recruiting, publicity bureau. No sun, no clouds, cut out background, set up soldiers, set up actors. United States of actors. Repairing frontline. Only actors can pose for photos. Trench of That's the a known fact. Bomb explosion, 50 yards from enemy trenches, 1917. And again, cut out background, as you can see. Nothing real about this picture, honestly. Nothing real. World War I, happy people on top of the cannon. Cut out background, no clouds, no sun. French soldiers making gas and flame attack on German trenches in Flanders, Belgium. So, this could be a battle. But again, how do you prove this? It could be just forest fire or some gas, you know, put here. After the reset and that's it. I can't see any... You know, you just put gas places for no reason. ...proof of a battle or soldiers anywhere. The irrepressible Australians at Anzac, an Australian bringing in wounded comrade to hospital. Right. I wonder why the background had to be cut though. But of course, irrepressible Australians in 1915. Oh man. <laughs> Picture posed in France. 
near frontline trenches by Major Evarts Tracy Engineer Corps USA, United States of Actors, to illustrate effects of foes gain gas. Now, listen to this. This is diamond. This is a jewel. If you check this picture without this title, let's say that there is no title. Would you think that this is a proof for the World War One? Of course. I don't think individually it is, but is taken with the sum of other evidence that World War One happened. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> World War One fucking happened. You would because it looks like a proof. They are in battle. There is gas attack, right? And this guy is dying. But they even sh say it here. This picture was set up. Picture posed in France to illustrate the effects of false gone gas. Right? They're literally saying this is to show it because if you took a photo of a gas attack, you'd be dead because it's a gas attack. <laughs> Tucker White says, how did humans ever survive before the world switched to color in the 70s? Huh? Right? So how do you know which one is true and which one isn't? Which one was set up and which wasn't? <laughs> Obviously now we know all of it was set up. It's all fake. It's fakery. It's a lie to our face. And that's it for me for today. I really had enough of looking at these fake pictures. If you support this message, become a member, donate, subscribe, comment, like, schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me. In any way, support me. You are cool. Oh, and by the way, you can also get my merch. Which fake photo was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. See you in the next one. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Hello everyone, this is a short video to tell you that transgenderism opens portals to demon possession. The cabal, the globalists, the woke left, the powers that be that rule this country, this world. Transphobia on the bingo card and thinly veiled anti-semitism on the bingo card. Tucker White says, with that neck beard, he's sure living up to the stereotype. Lily Lovestuff says, like, sir, the country you live in was a part of the empire that declared World War I. Did Franz Ferdinand not get kennedy after all? Dread Pirate Mick says, the background wasn't cut from that photo of the Austrian. You can see uh, Suvia Bay. I've been there. <laughs> Don't let facts get in the way of his good time. They know this. They know this more than we do. They count on us not believing in it. Hey, I'm not religious, but I will tell you, they are, and they are Satanists, and demons are real. Synthetic drugs and alcohol open portals to demon attachments. The natural ones are great, though. That's why when you get drunk and you black out and you can't remember, uh, and the next day people tell you you did stuff, because your soul actually gets pushed out of your body for a period of time. <laughs> okay, now I just want to know what happened that this lady did while she was drunk that she wants to blame on demons no no it wasn't me i was so blackout drunk a demon stole my body have you seen the movie ghost it was a lot like that but less patrick swayze and more demon and then you come back in when you sober up tucker white says so does turns leads to trans leads to satanic possession explain hannah being a lizard person no, I was a lizard person already. And lizard people and demons are different things. Very offensive. That's why strange things, awful things can happen when people are drunk. Or maybe because their inhibitions are really low and their coordination is off. And like, plenty of people drink, you know, safely and in moderation. But, you know, a lot of people overdo it, unfortunately. Um, but it's fun, I'm sure, for people who can do it normally and reasonably. It's not demons. Some people just have drinking problems. <laughs> Raven says she's got the NPR voice. Softly whispering NPR voice. Welcome back to the fresh air on NPR. I'm your host, Anna Turf. And I'm going to tell you about how to keep your holes clear. Your demon holes. Tea with Goblin says me rubbing tea gel on my belly in the middle of a circle of candles. Sure would be a shame if a demon ravished me right about now. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> synthetic drugs also open portals. We've seen people literally go crazy on synthetic drugs. So it's not about whether or not you believe in it. It's true. <laughs> and so it's a fact. And uh, that's what's happening. She said it. 
She said it's a fact. Verbally, she said it is a fact. And when you do that, it becomes true. I don't know if you know that. I am going to be given $10 million. That is a fact. I'll miss you all when that arrives, but, you know. We gotta do what we gotta do. And they know it. You pick your gender before you get into your body. You choose your parents and you choose your gender before you get in. It's a soul contract that you make between you and God. I do not consent to this contract. I do not stand under the authority of this contract. I was underage. I was not 18 at the time of the signing of this contract. Therefore, it is null and void. <laughs> and so what the globalists are doing, what the evil cabal, pedo-satanists are doing, they're all satanists. Satanists on the bingo card or Satanism on the bingo card. This is define God again. You choose, you do not choose your gender after you come in. So wait, he's mad because you like wanted to change your character model partway into the playthrough? Even Rockstar lets me do that if I just pay them. Like, really? God's mad about that? Like, hey, God, I feel ya. I try out the joystick. Not a big fan. Not a big fan. I'd like to try for something a little different. If you want me to sign a form, I will do that. Either way, gonna keep taking estrogen. It's the good shit. Okay? Cool. All right, that's why I'm making this a short... Hit <laughs> rocks fall, create new character. ...video because I want it to be shareable um, anywhere and everywhere. You do not choose your gender after you come in. You start playing, messing with stuff like that, you are opening portals to literally demon possession, but they're Satanists, and they want children to be... <clears throat> they, they're pedophiles. No, ma'am. And this is a thing... I, I imagine she's been had this pirated to her by... A lot of places on the internet, trans people have nothing to do with people who assault children or who are attracted to children. Pedophiles are a completely different thing. This isn't even a new strategy. Remember when society considered, like, all gay men to be predators, right? It's a similar thing. It's a tactic to try and demonize people who are different than you. It's just ridiculous. Tiger White says, how much more vi uh, watchable would these videos be if you swapped Miss NPR here with a Juggalo? I do kind of want that now. Gnome Pickle says, ma'am, God made your eyes poor, therefore your using glasses violates your agreement with God as he didn't make mistakes, apparently. <laughs> True. Citosaurus says, I overdid it so much I had to quit at only 23. I was such a mess. I'm no longer that type of trash. I'm a whole different type of trash 12 years later. I no longer perform the sniff test on my clothes to determine whether I can wear them for the fifth day in a row, but I can no longer talk to people. <laughs> yeah, I've been sober for some time too. Um, I don't drink anymore. I also very much overdid it. <laughs> the whole The whole first half of my 20s is not... The, not something I remember the most. <laughs> they want to sexualize children. That the whole move, the, the, the ruling elites are, they rape, torture, and cannibalize children, right? And they, they also have sex toys. Like they'll, they'll use children until they, they dispose of them. And that's a fact. And we have to. Did she just put sex toys on the same list as like, horrifying crimes against children to just be strong and wake up to this and not allow this indulgence is so much more sinister and so much more evil tucker white says no ma'am you're thinking of the catholic priests and anyone realizes then then just the operations and stuff like that and the cabal knows exactly what they're doing it's not discrimination against people who have gender dysphoria that it is you just want to reframe it so you can feel better about your bigotry <laughs> it's literally that I just want to live my life. Other trans people just want to live their lives. That's literally it. Please leave us alone. <laughs> that's about a soul that's lived many lives as a female, now starting to live as a male, and it takes a couple of lifetimes to adjust. We're all gay. We, we live many lifetimes, and we're all gay at some point. <laughs> But 
that's just a couple lifetimes and then we jump in and we're male again and that's how it works so I'm gonna stop this now because that's how it works and you can't pick your gender after you're born you can't you can be a feminine guy and a masculine girl but you cannot change your gender disagree so does my uh, ID and everything so. you're tampering with evil I love this lady. Ascension to 5D Earth. Shift to Sheen. 5D on the bingo card. This will be a wonderful and amazing time for all. The soul and true self will finally be able to come forth without resistance. The light that is within each being and form of life will be at the expression that Source intended. All the lives lived will merge into one if they have not already. The pure desires and intentions of self and another will be the same. Umatsu says, can confirm, I am gay, therefore everyone is gay. Talents and interests that one has will be amplified and enjoyed in a new way. Sure, and the knowledge or pace. This gives free- We gotta see her Q video. Hello, everyone. Today's recording date is January 17th, 2021. Welcome. Mike Max says, by these people's logic, every cisgender people are pedophiles because there are pedophiles that are cisgender. Yeah, doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? This video is specifically dedicated to telling everyone about Oritk. Oritk. Hmm. That's his name. That's his name. Okay, so that's who, that's who he is. Arit, that's his higher soul name. And Jesus is with him. Uh, Jesus is with She's talking about Q, of QAnon fame. Returning, and that's what this video is all about. And the Christians have some learning to do, and so do, so does everybody else. This is very exciting. Okay, and we can do this. I know we can. It's very exciting. They're already here. Jesus is here. He's on Earth. Is Jesus in the room with us right now? With Oritk. Now, Oritk is the higher Pleiadian soul. Jesus is a Pleiadian. Aliens on the bingo card. Pleiadians are a specific kind of alien that conspiracy theorists believe in jesus yeshua sananda i'm not really sure of his real name i've been told sananda is his real name tea with goblin says this lady eats cheese or her um or her ort q quack ort qu quack crackers <laughs> but he's considered one of the greatest spiritual teachers in all of the universe not just here on earth so for christians who are really into jesus this should excite you more than anything in the world but what you have to do is you also have to do your breaking through. Uh, this is the Great Awakening. And the Christians also have to do their breaking through the Matrix, too. It isn't just legacy media. It's also uh, that we have to recognize and accept that the, the cabal, the ruling elites, wrote the Bible. And there's disinformation and misinformation and uh, missing information in the Bible as well. There are a lot of Jesus is real teachings, but he's coming back to bring us true Christ consciousness. Uh, he's been out learning and honing in on his skills, and he's coming back. Uh, Jesus is not religious. He's not into religion. Uh, religions are going to take, are going to have to take some, uh, the Great Awakening too. It's Jesus isn't religious is the funniest fucking sentence. <laughs> it's coming to them as well. Jesus isn't religious. He's just spiritual. But um, God is real and love is real and God is love. And the real teachings of Jesus are coming back and we should all be very excited about that. And for those people, I've heard this many, many times, you know, oh, those, that's the fallen angel stuff. And that's what the cabal taught everyone. The book cabal taught everyone to be afraid of the good ETs because the cabal are the bad ETs. This is the great awakening. Here it is. You got to wake up. Here it is right in front of you. The Langren, thanks for nine months, says sub baby needs a name suitable for a Pleiadian if possible. All right. Uh, Tosk. Krinkal. Tosk. Krinkal.
Gnome Pickles says, Hannah, how do you find these people? Do we need to send you more Blu-rays to save you from them? Wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Gift subs and bits, though. Psst. We're getting it all now. As long as you serve your tinfoil queen. The reason why Arit is the biggest threat to them. The reason why mainstream media is calling everything involved with the um, research and the dissemination program uh, a conspiracy theory is because their greatest... Their... Sounds Klingon. Tosk, I think, was actually from a species where all of his people were called Tosk. And they were like a slave race or something. I don't know. It was an alien name that came to mind. Greatest um, threat is being found out. That is the truth. The greatest threat is the truth. And how much of the truth they have covered up is absolutely... St oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the hunted ones in Deep Space Nine. Thank you. I couldn't remember. Staggering. It would blow... It's going to blow everybody's mind. Now you too are Tosk O'Brien. ...minds when it all comes out. Number one being that they are the... Uh, malevolent ETs. They remember the sinking of Atlantis. They sunk Atlantis. There was a big war. They sunk Atlantis. They enslaved everyone. Atlantis on the bingo card. They kept the good ETs out, and um, this plan has been in the hatching long before JFK uh, Senior went down. He came. He's Palladian. That's who this is. That's who this is. John F. Kennedy Senior. His higher soul is Orit. So she thinks that Q is JFK Sr., a man who would be like 108 years old. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln's higher soul is oh, Orit. What? Abraham Lincoln and JFK were the same person and Q is also that person? Whoa! There's another, another living being a splinter of this soul. Q claimed as the source on the bingo card. Alive on Earth right now, today. Arit as John F. Kennedy Sr., that body is gone. We all know that. that JFK was so excited to get to his next life that he wasn't even assassinated. His head just blew up like that just so he could become Q. That body really did die. But... Uh, Tea with Goblins says, I sunk Atlantis, but I did not shoot the Pleiadians. Over in 5D, in the higher dimensions, that's where our higher souls are. We all have higher souls. This is all part of disclosure, you guys. This is all part of what they've been trying to keep from us. This is what they don't want us to know. They don't want us to know who they really are, what they really do, and why a writ has really come. The Galactic Federation of Light. Every single uh, benevolent ET in our galaxy is involved in this operation. It's absolutely massive. They line our skies. They line our skies. They're doing soft disclosure everywhere all around the world. All you have to do is go look for it. It's super exciting. And I've been told from different sources who didn't know each other that I am part of doing disclosure in this, in this plan. But I was already doing it anyway. I didn't need to be told that. I'm super into it. I've never been afraid of it. Two separate people told me a thing I was already doing was a thing I should do. So that's pretty much proof that I was meant to do the thing that I'm doing. <laughs> the Langren says, JFK is my baby daddy. I'm the one that caught anything to get out of the child support payments, huh? Uh, John. But on when Kabimer hinted that um, Aritk was um, the higher soul of John F. Kennedy Sr., and that's who we're talking to, um, I knew right away that was true because here's the thing, you guys. There are 200 million star seeds that are incarnated on Earth for the Great Awakening. We came from all around the galaxy. Um, and jumped into human souls in three different waves. We started in the 60s, and there was there's uh, there's wave one, there's first wave, second wave, and third wave. I'm first wave, 60s. My kids would be second wave. They're they're a higher DNA. They have like higher uh, consciousness in a way, and they and they're much more tuned into what's going on. They're sort of the Earth kids that have come out of our generation, and then their kids are downright psychic. They even have different DNA. No, they do not. Not in the way you are saying. <laughs> what the fuck? Holidays with this woman must be interesting. We have a, um, 
carbon-based DNA, and they are born with a silicone-based based DNA. Anybody who's been getting ringing in the ears and weird dreams and weird stuff happening, that's all DNA upgrades to all of us. Mr. Whisker says, I thought the Pleiadians were associated with Taurus, so if Jesus came to end the age of the bull and bring in the age of the lamb, shouldn't he be from some random place in the Aries constellation? <laughs> old folks you've put more thought into this than they have we have the old dna we're going up to silicone uh we're getting a silicone dna upgrades because we're going up to 5d earth yeah baby <laughs> <laughs> hey this is this lady's good she's funny really and truly happening that's the next stage we had to get through all of this we have to raise the vibrations they had to take down um the the establishment um, that's why they, they're fighting so hard. That's why all these lockdowns, that's why everything that they're doing to us. Um, but it's the last throes of an establishment that's been in power for a very long time, thousands of years. They are the Roman Catholic Church who have been doing child sacrifice since day one. So lots of kids being rescued, lots of arrests being made. And we have a bright future ahead of us. When President Trump says that the best is yet to come, it is an understatement. When Oritk says this is biblical it's an understatement they're both absolutely true you guys like this isn't just i mean the last video that i put out about the 1871 you know i've got people in the comments you know trying to um fight about and argue about the details who cares who cares who cares about the details the point is maybe we're not supposed to know because maybe the enemy's not supposed to know the entire details of it but the point is the gist of it that's what's happening. It's okay. Like the Republic is being handed back to the people. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. Nothing can stop what is coming. Nothing. This is the great awakening. And so Christians are next because Christians, you have led this. Mega, you led this all the way along. Now it's your turn. You got to do this. It's your turn to shed not just the fake news. You've been so good about learning all that. Now you've got to look at yourselves and everything you've been taught and you've got, to be, you've, got to, you've got to be willing to shake the matrix off of your Christianity too because, because Jesus is coming back and he, he, we've got to clear the slate and we're going to get new information and we're going to get the real teachings and it's going to be very exciting and you have to be willing to, to, to know, you have to be willing to accept that you got sucked into. Okay, you just do. I genuinely want to know what stuff in the Bible she disagrees with to think that the Bible, I mean, like, I don't think the Bible is true either. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not a Christian, but she is a Christian, at least according to her, I think. And she doesn't believe in the Bible. So I want to know which parts of the Bible does she not agree with. My particular job in this in this life in this incarnation is basically i'm wondering if it's racist shit because she has other stuff on her like channel that is very very anti-indigenous people so i'm wondering if she wants the bible to be more racist or something <laughs> call everybody stupid because that's what we've been we've been stupid we've been so stupid that we've allowed them to eat our children to rape torture and eat our children and we have to stop being stupid it isn't we can't we don't have any more time to have our feelings be hurt by that or to be insulted by that we really need to wake up to uh the massive sheep that we've been and how stupid we really have been like you guys you all had okay first of all taking communion and drinking the blood that is satanic that's satanic i don't want to argue with any of you if any of you come on here and start arguing with me it's just it's i'm gonna wipe you out i mean you're gonna be removed and blocked and interesting choice of words choice of words Tucker White with a bit Just with. because this is the song that doesn't end. Oh, no. no. I will burn lamb chop to the ground. <sighs> not before I insult you. This is happening. Everybody has to wake up. It's not even really a debate anymore. We're not going to argue theology. All of that's ending, okay? It's just, it's been one big mind game the entire way along. All these religions have been created in order to keep us all divided and, and talking. It's like the Tower of Babel, right? It's just, we're going to, we're going to all speak one language, so to speak. We're gonna... God didn't want humans to speak one language. That's why he did the Tower of Babel. We're going to speak the language of the heart and our race won't matter. Our genders won't matter. Another thing too that people like the movie Pocahontas, where magically she and John Smith can communicate because of 
Empathy or something? I, I, I'm not clear. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I feel like there's a magic thing where they can understand each other, even though she doesn't speak English. People have to understand, including Christians. God doesn't shame. There's no wrath of God. That's God doesn't shame? It's the stuff that the satanic cabal put into the Bible. And gay people are... Re this could go one of two ways. Real gay people. I'm not talking about the satanic push towards opening portals of just demonic possession of, you know, indiscriminate sex without love. I don't mean any of that. And the gender bending. I don't mean that. What I mean is a real gay person. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to... You guys know who you are, girls and gals. Guys and gals. Um, they've always existed. They are male spirits in female bodies. And, you know, the, and vice versa. And it's okay. Like, it's okay with God. It's, we, it's not a religious thing at all. What? And that's why it's easy to accept that because we're not doing religion anymore. We're not doing wrath of God. We're not doing any of that. You're either of the light or you're not. And you're lo and and sexuality is a private thing between two people. We need to bring it back to that. We need to bring some propriety and um, dignity back into our bedrooms and into our love lives. Ma'am, if you don't want to talk about your sex life, that's fine. But if other people want to talk about theirs, that's also their business. It's fine. And into our... And we need to integrate and use our souls and our spirits in what we do and not just our bodies. And we need to teach our children that and these lost children. There's a lot of rebuilding to do. Once, once everything is secured, once the Republic is secured, there's so much rebuilding to do. She's talking about after she kills all of her political enemies. Stone Corbell says, Lady, if you're gay, you can just be gay. You don't have to come up with this incredibly convoluted mythology to explain why. It's fine. And number one, we got to take care of the homeless. That is my number one um, thing. That's my number one thing in Vancouver. And everybody needs, I think that should be the first thing we all do in every city. That everybody should get involved in rebuilding for the homeless. We gotta take care of that right away because you know the drugs have been pumped in, the fentanyl. It's just been a horrible thing that has happened to all of our societies. And so we need to rebuild. There's a lot of rebuilding to do. Our fighting is over, and now we're going to rebuild. That's why Jesus is back. That's why he's coming back. And what better time? I mean, all Christians, you know that if you really did believe that Jesus was coming back, can you think of a better time ever in history that he would come back? Every Christian thinks that the rapture is going to happen within their... I shouldn't say every. That's generalizing. There are always some Christians of every generation that think the rapture is going to happen in their lifetime. Or that Jesus is going to come back. The modern concept of the rapture is relatively recent. No. Trust your instincts. He's here. He's literally here on earth. With... They're both Pleiadian. Pleiadians are the seven sisters. I guess the, the universe is absolutely teeming with life, tons and tons of life. I'm an Arcturian incarnate here, f much further away. Um, the Pleiadians basically look like us. I mean, Ivanka Trump is Pleiadian. She is the incarnated, the current incarnated soul of this, of Arit. Oh my God, so it's not Trump, it's Ivanka. <laughs> Wait, no, who who did you say? It's basically look like us. Did she I say mean, Melania? Ivanka Trump. Tons and tons of life. I'm an Arcturian incarnate here, f much further away. Um, the Palladians basically look like us. I mean, Ivanka Trump. Ivanka Trump? <laughs> so apparently... This is formally Abraham Lincoln and JFK. Sort of. I assume it kind of works like the Avatar from Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra. Sort of a combination <laughs> of a person and some other being. What's the thing in Legend of Korra that it's explained gives the Avatar Avatar powers? The entity like has a name. I don't remember is Pleiadian. She is the incarnated, the current incarnated soul. Rava, thank you. Of this, of Arit. 
She will be the, f the first female pre president of the United States of America. We absolutely know that for a fact. Baron Trump, who has one of the highest IQs on the planet right now. <laughs> what? Uh, will be a great leader in the new Atlantis because things are going to change. But they're going to they're gonna change for the better. we got to get through Baron all. Trump for president of Atlantis. This, we got to do some rebuilding. And we're ascending to 5D Earth. You can all look into that. We're leaving behind 3D Earth and 3D duality. War is over. Everything is over. All of the GMOs are over. Um, all of the um, chemtrails, all of the big farm. Chemtrails on the bingo card. Ma. All of the dark negativity and duality is over. All the division is over. You guys, we have the capacity to live in peace. We're not really that racist. We're not really racist. <laughs> Freudian slip. Let's go back on that one. Pharma. All of the dark negativity and duality is over. All the division is over. You guys, we have the capacity to live in peace. We're not really that racist. We're not really racist. We're not really that racist. <laughs> Raven says generic blonde white woman equals definitely an alien. I could actually buy that. Okay, they've stoked these wars between us for a very long time. I'm end race based law in Canada. My company's name is end race based law. What she's saying by that is she wants all indigenous people protections and stuff to go away. Like the few that there are. She literally does live streams where she wears like a stereotypical like headdress with feathers and stuff and talks about how she thinks. Uh, yeah, it's, it's bad. It's bad. I took a look at it. It's bad. You know, like we have some rebuilding to do. Like her whole stream was basically talking about indigenous people and being like, uh, we conquered you anyway. And saying really bad things about indigenous people and being like, you're better off because we conquered you and all sorts of shit. Raven says, have you heard of the conspiracy that Steve Bannon is Baron Trump from the future? That would be rough. That'd be a rough future for Baron. <laughs> Everywhere around the world. Is it because their names kind of sound alike? Bannon and Baron? They both have a buh. <laughs> is that why? And, um, and it's coming. And we have to all accept each other, all the different races and different cultures. And I think generally we're like that. That's why we travel. We like to ha experience each, other, each other's cultures. And that's what we have to think about with our galactic brothers and sisters. We just got more cultures coming in, you guys. And um, some of them look a little different than us. But if we can accept all the creatures on the pla our planet already here, I mean, think about all the creatures that are in the ocean that we don't have any communication with. They don't know us and we don't know them. And they look different than us, some of them. But there are some basic DNA similarities. Well, that's what we're going to deal with next, okay? And uh, the cabal has been trying to scare us with Hollywood movies for a long time. That they're, you know, they're all bad. Everything is bad. And it's like, we're, it's going to be an alien invasion and all that. No, they're the most loving beings in the universe. The bad ones are already here. They already took over. That's who... Um, that's who the Galactic Federation of Light are fighting. They've come back to fight the Cabal, the bad ETs, because we couldn't. We were too brainwashed. We didn't understand what was really happening to us. Raven says it has the mm. same vibe of black people are better off after slavery. Ooh, yeah, I've heard some Republicans say that shit. Oops. <laughs> I think I got myself. I did. But for anyone who comes on here and comments about that um see if, if you say oh you're crazy you're a lunatic yeah we already had thinly veiled anti-semitism but yes that counts it's because we've been so brainwashed by everything we don't even accept that this could be possibly true but i don't even understand why everybody's afraid of this i am so excited that they're here you can't even believe it i i'm thrilled beyond measure you guys i'm so excited that you're here i love you our galactic brothers and sisters i really do uh, from all around the galaxy and I'm welcoming you here and on behalf of my brothers and sisters here on earth welcome uh, I know what's behind this entire operation and I've just been waiting to do disclosure and I'm striking while the iron is hot they're here all you gotta do is start looking around look up on YouTube there's videos going up everywhere and people are going what is this what is this what are all the big booms and booms the trumpet sounds the booms it's all them Okay, they do the crop circles. Most of the Arcturians do the crop circles, and I cannot waste this moment to say planes also do crop circles, but they suck at them. <laughs> How do planes do crop circles? What? Arcturians do better crop circles. We're the techies. But there are people here, there are 200... Oh, Pleiadians. 100 million... Oh, she said planes. ...incarnated star seeds here from around the... Um, 
galaxy. If you think you're a star, you're a star seed. You are that. Like that's your number one clue that you're a star seed because you're activated by all this. Okay. The people who are leaving these strange comments and all this are not activated by the truth. The people who are being activated by the truth know this is true. They know you can feel it. Especially people who love Jesus and really do believe that He's coming back. That He's coming back. He's here. They're here. They're all here. We're waiting. It's going to be a big event, a big celebration called Sheen, Shift to Sheen. And um, we're going to meet them all, and it's going to be wonderful, you guys. We have so much ahead of us. The best is yet to come is the biggest understatement ever. <laughs> It's going to be the complete opposite of everything we're experiencing and descending into right now that they were trying to descend us into. Okay, so everybody have hope. That's why I'm making these hope videos because it's happening, you guys. It's happening. All right, well, I love you all. Even if you are stupid, because I know I've been stupid too, and we have to accept that, and it's okay. We can do that. We don't have to let our idiot thinks they're a genius on the bingo card. He goes get upset by that. We can just accept that we're stupid, and now we can't be stupid anymore. And um, the best is yet to come, and, and we're going to be, we're going to learn everything now. We're not going to be stupid anymore. We're going to get all the information, and that's part of it too. I mean, we're stupid because we've been lied to, right? So give yourself a break. Give yourself a break. We've been lied to, and um, we're not going to be lied to anymore. Okay, bye. Hmm. Where is the predictive programming thing? We should actually probably take a look at the bingo card real quick. Chemtrails. QAnon claimed as a source. 5D. Idiot thinks they're a genius. Aliens. Atlantis. Did we have reptilians? I don't think so. We're about to have predictive programming, so I'm just going to mark that now. Satanic. The line between Shud Watch and Tinfoil Tuesday thins. Transphobia. Tartaria. Thinly veiled anti Semitism. Doesn't understand how cameras work. Do your own research. Okay. That should... Did she say sheep at any point? I don't think I heard sheep. She called people stupid, but I don't remember hearing sheep. You heard sheep? You sure? Anyone else? Can I get a second on that to confirm? You heard sheep? Okay. Sheeple it is. Hmm. ODD TV. Now, the dead celebrity, they have to be alive. She doesn't think JFK's alive. She thinks 
part of his spirit's been reincarnated, which I would not consider him being alive. Wait. Ants are amazing. Thanks for six months. Says, hello, Mrs. Blast. How are you and Mrs. Blast? I'm doing well since my day off was napping, so we'll catch the VOD later. Um, we're doing good. We're doing good. Hope you enjoy your nap. Or I guess if you watch this later, hope you enjoyed the nap. Predictive programming is a subtle form of psychological conditioning provided by the media to acquaint the public with planned societal changes to be implemented by um, TPTB. TPTB, what would that be? The people, the, no, the, I don't know what that stands for. Anyway, basically predictive programming is a way that conspiracy theorists justify their conspiracy theories by saying, look, something vaguely similar happened in a movie or TV show once, so it must be true, and they're telling us about it through the TV because mental health care in this country is really, really bad. The powers that be, thank you. I've looked and found over 60 instances of 9-11 predictive programming alone. 9-11 out of nowhere on the bingo card. 1949, Porky Pig and Charlie Dog cartoon. Hawk, what's that? Look, it's the towers! They're falling! Ah! Does this person not think that t any tower had ever fallen in the history of the world prior to 9-11? 1963, Wonder Woman comic book cover. She knocks, she's in between two buildings. Actually, no, that's not two buildings. That's one building that she's accidentally split in half, it looks like. So that's not the same thing as 9-11 at all. <laughs> it is probably someone's fetish, though, yes. 1970, 30 Seconds Over New York, book by Robert Bacard. Oh, you stupid asshole. It's a reference to Pearl Harbor. Oh, you dumb bitch. Do they not understand that, like, prior to 9-11, one of the reasons the World Trade Centers was the... was one of the targets for 9-11 because it was already known as a symbol for New York City, like, America's financial capital, right? It's a symbol of America's economic power. It was chosen specifically because of that. It was not chosen randomly. So when they look back and go, look at all these things from the past that show the Twin Towers. Yeah, they were very famous buildings. And if you wanted to show someone you were in New York, that's what you showed them in a book or a movie or whatever to establish it. It's the same thing if in a movie you see the Eiffel Tower or... Um, the Chrysler building or, uh, the, the, uh, the needle in Seattle. You can determine locations and settings of stories based upon visual identifiers. <laughs> or the capital, sure. Nearest Crow Hill, thanks for 17 months, says nobody show this guy the tarot card, the tower. 1973, Godzilla vs. Megalon, movie poster. Yes, the Twin Towers existed before 9-11. They were quite famous landmarks. <laughs> Color by Emmy says in the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, there was an episode where they mentioned a previous bombing attempt at the World Trade Center because that's a real thing that happened. Prior to 9-11, there was an attempted bombing of the World Trade Center years before. Some people don't seem to know that for some reason. Chromatic Cuttlefish says it's a reference to 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, which is a World War II propaganda film. Um, Tea with Goblins says Godzilla did 9-11 confirmed. Yes. 1973, Superman comic. Nin 1975, Cracked magazine cover. Again, yes, the concept of a building being on fire and collapsing were not new before 9-11. 
Like, popular culture was full of depictions of disasters and buildings being exploded and on fire. Like, there were... There was, like, an entire genre in the 70s of disaster films. God, the, the Towering Inferno is a good example. There are movies where a clear part of the premise is building is in danger or on fire. <laughs> it's not uncommon. Discordant Vol says, in fact, they existed only prior to 9-11. Yeah, there was a period after 9-11 for a little bit where showing buildings collapsing and exploding was kind of a taboo in media. It hit a little too close to home. It was too real. It's, of course, come back by 2012 when Avengers came out. You know, it was fine again, and that ends in a whole scene of, like, New York getting uh, fucked up by an alien invasion and buildings getting crashed and doing stuff, so... You know, it wore off, but there was a period right after 9-11 where it was kind of not cool to depict stuff like that. 1976, 9-11, a book by Thomas Chastain. It's probably called 911, would be my guess. Yeah, the emergency number, 911. It's not titled 911, it's titled 911, like after the emergency line. <laughs> the Christmas bomber has the perfect gift for New York City. 12 days of uninterrupted terror. Suddenly, New York's hottest line will be the emergency number, 911. So it's a novel about a, a mad bomber loose in the city called 911. 1976. Sesame Street magazine cover. <laughs> that one's pretty unfortunate, but also hilarious. Nineteen seventy six Spidey Super Stories comic book cover. Remember on nine eleven when a big fat guy took the twin towers in his fists and smashed them? That was crazy. 1978, Super Friends TV show, the episode entitled Monolith of Evil. <laughs> 1978, Dr. John, City Lights album cover. That's literally just a depiction of New York, but they're candles. It's not even exploding or falling over or collapsing or anything. The Chrysler building is also a candle. <laughs> 1979, Meteor, movie poster. Yeah, a meteor smashed into New York. Things are going to explode. The Twin Towers, again, are were in New York. So any depiction of New York being destroyed in fiction, which is going to happen, by the way, because it's one of the biggest cities in the world, and anything that is one of the biggest cities in the world is going to have fictional depictions of it, some of which are going to include destruction. So inevitably, you're going to have illustrations and stuff of the Twin Towers being destroyed because they're iconic for the city. Sorry, it was the Empire State Building. I apologize. 1979. Goodbye, stranger. It's been nice. Hope you find your paradise. This is, again, literally, this is just supposed to be, like the New York skyline, but depicted with diner items? Do you not know? Super tr Oh, I see, because if you flip the letters around, it kind of looks like 9-11. <laughs> Tramp. Breakfast in America. Album cover. 1979. Saga. Images at Twilight. Album cover. But why hasn't a giant insect ever ripped the top off that building in real life if you think this is predictive programming? Lily Love Stuff says, um, I have a photo of my grandparents standing in New Jersey with the Twin Towers behind them, and my grandma was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer on 9-11, like she was in the doctor's office when the first plane hit. Coincidence? Yes. 1979. Pakistan International Airlines ad. Again, it's literally just once again a thing of, hey, look, the Twin Towers. That's how you know we're talking about New York. <laughs> and unfortunately, the implications of this ad are just really sad after 9-11. 1979. 
It's a coincidence. 1983, Def Leppard, Pyromania. That's just literally a generic building on fire. Even for this video, that's a stretch. Discordant Vol says, Behold, for I have noodleized your building. Evil. Album cover. Nineteen eighty three, a book by Jose Borja. Nineteen eighty five, G.I. Joe, episode forty six. You just stand right there, Sonny. Look straight ahead and hold still while we scan you. Hey! Transaction approved. Subject's retinal scan matches no known dissident, subversive, or enemy of state on file. Have a nice day. Hey! Come back here! This money ain't no good! It's U.S. dollars! Absolutely worthless! 19... I... What is that supposed to be a predictor for? People still take U.S. dollars? What are you talking about? I never watched G.I. Joe. I assume that's like an episode where they went to an alternate dimension or something. Where like Cobra had taken over the world or Russia was in power. I have no idea. <laughs> 86. Daredevil comic book cover. Discordant Vold says Mark of the Beast stuff. Eh, yeah. Again, it's the New York skyline because Daredevil takes place in New York City. Like a lot of Marvel comics. 1986, Real Ghostbusters. Also takes Season place in one, New York. Episode 12. 1986. Is this video literally just this list? It might be. I'll skip through in a minute because I know it's getting monotonous. Six. Dream Machine. There's computers where the resolution is so high that you can never tell that it was ever touched by anything, which raises the whole question of photography as evidence of anything. I don't even think people are aware of how much computer graphics is used today. There's just a whole question now of what is real. Create a new reality by adding an erupting volcano to the San Francisco skyline. Color by Emmy says I'm enjoying the nostalgia. Or remove the World Trade Center from the New York City skyline. <laughs> ah! 1987, The Squeeze movie cover. 1987, cover of Fortune International Magazine. Nin Willie Love Stuff says, legit question, is New York City the only city worth defending in Marvel? It seems like they have too many heroes. There are other places. There are heroes that operate out of like the LA area. The West Coast Avengers are a thing. The Great Lakes Avengers are a thing. Um... But yeah, heroes tend to be based in big cities. And the Marvel offices were originally in New York, so. 1988. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Season 2, Episode 7. Oh, bad news, Master Splinter. Shredder is up to something. But he ran off before we could discover what. All we know is it had something to do with the Twin Towers. Sooner or later, he will reveal his plan. <laughs> Like, what do you suppose Shredder's up to this time? Michelangelo, you heard April's message. He's been spotted on the roof of the World Trade Center. <laughs> it's for sure he's not there for the view. Once again, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a show that took place in New York City. They probably mentioned a lot of famous landmarks. I would imagine there's probably an episode of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where they also go to the Statue of Liberty for some reason. <laughs> Hey. Or the subway, or other New York things. It's a show in that setting. They're gonna use the setting. Hang on! We're gonna cry! 1988, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, it's New York. It's a symbol for New York. 
New York is a fun place to fly over in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've done it with the new one. Like, it's a, it's a nice looking game. 1989. For what it is. If you look close, obviously the models aren't that great. But you know, when you're flying over them, they look fine from the perspective of a plane. WWF. Twin Towers taken, Meijing. This would be at this time, the Slickster, a key of the African dream and a big boss man. All right, what else we got in this video? Let's skim through to see what other stuff we have that might be interesting. 1991, Tetra Star, video game. They march over the nation, seeking out mutants, hunting them down like animals. Surrender, mutant. Some fight back. <laughs> But not for long. The Sentinels herd the surviving mutants into detention camps. The camps are your fight. Living Love Stuff says the Great Lakes Avengers, what are they doing saving uh, Sheboygan from a snowball? Where were they when the Edmund Fitzgerald sank? That's funny. All right, enough of that. He's just going to list stuff, but you get it. My guest says an ancient spirit most of you have never heard of is silencing your voice and the power of God in your life, your marriage, your children, your finances, your spiritual gifting. Find out the identity of this spirit and it's time to obliterate it. So glad you're here. I plead the blood. I surrender this platform to you. Have your way. God, show us your glory. Tony Suarez is a third generation spirit filled preacher. I want to take you back to 1952. His grandparents. <laughs> this Gordon Vols says, Oh, fuck, they found me. Gotta go. Received the Messiah. In such a supernatural fashion. Tony, what happened? My grandfather was coming home from work and had stopped. This show just has grifters on every episode and lets them peddle their grift. It's so fucking sad. The people who sit in on this show in the audience are genuinely some of the most credulous, gullible people I've ever seen on a show. It's so sad. In the local market to buy bread. And a missionary happened to be there, and he gave my grandfather a New Testament. He took it home and began reading. Now, mind you, my grandfather and grandmother had 11 children, and so they would read the Bible to, uh, to their children, and they get to the book of Acts, and they don't understand what the promise of the Father is. They don't have anyone to explain it to them. So my grandfather told the group, we're gonna do what they did, and if we do what they did, Perhaps we'll get what they got. You know what? It's so simple. You need help to get confused. <laughs> <laughs> so while they were praying and fasting, my uncle Raphael, who at that time would have been eight years old, had a vision. The angel of the Lord appeared to my eight-year-old uncle and said, go to the city of Bucaramanga, to this street and this street number. My servant is waiting for you. It took faith to hear this and to obey it, but they made the journey and they went to the city of Bucaramanga. And when they got there, they found that street. They found that street number. And when they knocked on the door, a missionary from England named William Thompson answered and said, God told me you were coming. Wow. And he preached the gospel. And that day they received the Lord. He took them to the, what we call the Rio Magdalena, the, Magd the Magdalena River. I like and they the were, way you say that. <laughs> say, it, say it again, the Rio. Rio Magdalena. Oh it's a little God. more powerful. It's just so fucking white. Spanish, you know, <laughs> and they were water baptized for the remission of their sins. And just like in the book of Acts, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, there's something that you taught that I frankly haven't heard before. It's an ancient, unknown spirit that few, few have ever even heard of, but its effects are in Did the. Did this man make up a demon? The news. Tell me about that. I'd never heard of it until I heard it from the lips of God. When he spoke to me and he said, this spirit that is pestering the world is the spirit of hyena. 
It's a spirit <laughs> of mockery, thievery, and distraction. I wasn't expecting that, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> And, and so I began studying hyenas and watching. They pester lions, they distract lions, they antagonize lions. And it's a lazy spirit because they let the lions do all the hunting, all the killing, all the work. And then after the lions have a harvest, they come in and distract the lion to steal what belongs to the lions. And so this, is, this spirit is alive and well right now, the spirit of mockery, that anything that's holy, anything that's righteous, anything that's godly is now, it, it's, it's the joke. And sadly, not just in the secular world, but even amongst the church, Things that are holy and righteous, things that are sacred, have become jokes and become the, the, the source and the point of our mockery. Siren, uh, our Siren Aradia 13 says they read the Bible alone and got all the way to Acts before they had questions. And, and some of the other it's things impressive. are really something. Tell me about what the females do with their babies. First off, for, th what? for thousands of years, they thought they were gender neutral. They couldn't tell the difference between a male and a female hyena. Tell me if that- Oh God, is this gonna turn transphobic all of a sudden? It's not the spirit of the age. <laughs> it, took, it took some scientists that really studied to say, oh wait, there are male hyenas and female hyenas. Well, we as a human- I'm pretty sure it was because the female hyenas have big penises. <laughs> or something. Basically, they have a sort of clitoris that's that looks like a penis. They look like very close together. So I've heard. Society are going in reverse. We knew that God created male and female, but this spirit has overtaken us. The spirit of hyena is an alpha female spirit. Mm. It's the spirit of feminism, where every male is, a, is an idiot. Every male is dumb. Every male is, is worthless. So in packs of hyenas, the male is only good for, for procreation, and then he'll be kicked out of the herd. They never want to see him again. And it's a spirit of infanticide, because these females maintain their power by killing their young. This is so disingenuous. Infanticide is prevalent in tons of species of animals and even more so if it's times of like starvation where they don't have ample food and stuff in in, in how do, how do, like that's a common thing in the animal kingdom hate to break it to you nature's fucked up nature does not adhere to our particular morality as far as anything goes the most Kill violent them. way they they crush the skulls of their young it is the spirit of abortion it is the spirit <laughs> of infanticide this feminist Baby killing, male rejecting, mocking spirit is the spirit of the age, which is trying to distract lions from what we are supposed to rule and reign in through Jesus. Okay, how do we break free of this spirit? Because I can see it's affecting every, all these areas that are is going it? on in society. Kippy with 100 bit says literally nothing about what he said about hyena is true. Jesus fucking Christ. It's not just that's what people want. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. Don't you ever look at a person. It's the person, the, the entity that's pulling the strings of a puppet that doesn't know how to make Jesus Lord. Uh, how do we break free? So the, the, the hyena in the natural, the only way it can kill a lion is to distract the lion and isolate the lion. When it can break the lion away and get it, get it isolated, then a pack of hyenas will come and they'll attack that. That's what's happened. We don't love each other. We can't hang out with, with each other the way we used to. How many people watch this show? This channel has 1.6 million subscribers, so. Uh, Discordant Vol says powers and principalities, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Kicks off a hype train. Used to because we fight about absolutely everything. And the only thing that can scare a, a hyena away is the roar of a lion. And I don't know if anyone else hears what I hear, but I hear the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah because he's seen the afflictions. I'm always falling off my chair <laughs> when I say that. He leaves. It's just such a fucking grift. Mr. Whiskers, thanks for gifting us up. For their own miracle. History. Jesus Christ. 50% to level one on the hype train.
for those who don't know, um, the Artemis mission, the first one went well. This is the same um, rocket system and everything that is going to be taking humans uh, back to the moon sometime this decade. I know they were planning 2023 or 24 originally, but stuff got delayed, so it's probably closer to 25, 26, maybe even later now. But either way, the rocket went up successfully, it did what it needed to do, and it came back and landed successfully. So, that's very good. Of course, Flat Earthers don't like this because it brings us one step closer to the moon landing, once again being proven to be true by us going back and filming it in 4K. <laughs> But anyway, that's some years away. Either way, they're already trying to debunk that, so let's take a look at a quick video where one of these flat earthers tries to say that, you know, they think the whole Artemis thing is fake. MW1642, thanks for gifting a sub. 81% to level one on the hype train. So I didn't get cited one single scientific demonstration like I asked for from Globe Believers. Not one. What I did get sent was this. Supposed historical footage from NASA showing an Earth rise from the dark side of the moon filmed by the Orion spacecraft. Putting aside the fact Hi, it looks absolutely ridiculous. Putting aside the fact they show the Earth to be a ball, which of course we know scientifically impossible. It's not. And it's also <laughs> I like that he's like, I know this is fake because it shows the Earth is rounded. That can't be true. Kind of an argument from consequences. Um, Goldleen Ash, thanks for three months, says, glad to finally see you live. Glad you could make it. And thanks for getting us over level one of the hype train. Put, a put aside the fact they chuck in some piano here, again hoping that might soften you up to believe this nonsense. Putting all that aside, we still see an obvious problem. See if you can spot it. Um, Cashel Gladio with 100 bits says, Because conservatives are always on point when it comes to animal analogies, just ask the lobster guy, can't they at least reference other apes for this kind of thing, like bonobos? Do you bonobos, did you know bonobos are universally bisexual? I did know that. globe earth just risen up behind the dark side of the moon oh 27 dollars thank you so much for gifting five tier one subs to the community we appreciate that thank you all right let's bring it back a smidge mm. you can see the supposed dark side of the moon there blocking this lit up globe earth which when we bring it out pretty much the side facing us near enough looks totally lit up yeah Half the Earth is illuminated at all times. Which is a bit of a problem. Not really. Because we've got the sun supposedly 93 million miles away. Mm -hmm. Judging by the shadows on the craft, behind us to our left. We've got the moon in front. Sir, are you going to treat the light of the sun in the solar system as if it is a spotlight on a stage? Space is big, and the sun is not a flashlight or a spotlight. It is a sphere that is shooting light out in all directions. Because it's a sphere. <laughs> sun big and far away. 48% to level 3 on the hype train. front of the spacecraft, which of course is filming this silly charade. And then we've got the globe Earth fully lit up behind the dark moon. The Earth, again, is always like, unless we're talking about like when there's um, eclipses and stuff, the Earth is like 50% illuminated. Half the Earth is in day and half the Earth is in night. And it is a constantly moving process because, you know... We're kind of on a rhythm here <laughs> with the earth, you know, turning. You see the obvious problem here? 
the moon, the dark side of the moon, in relation to where the sun is, in relation to this spacecraft supposedly filming this, the dark side of the moon would be fully lit up. Not necessarily. The light you're seeing on the, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, craft is probably artificial, so you can see it. So probably the sun is kind of down here. That's not helpful to you, because my perspective's different. But, like, the sun is probably relative to this, not there. You know how I know that? Because there's not light on the dark side of the moon. So. Mm, Citosaur says, thanks for getting me through the rest of my workday, trying to decide if I should head out now or wait until I made progress on this stupid project. I have to change alarm codes for over a thousand people. I'm only in the G's. Oof. It's not. Are they that dumb at NASA and their special effects team, if you can call it that, that they didn't work out the dark side of the moon is reference to people on Earth, not in space, particularly from this shot. Because Mr. Whiskers says angles be weird like this that. This shot, the dark side of the moon would be fully lit up based on the shadows, based on the fact the earth facing us is pretty much fully lit, which means we're facing the so-called globe earth, which means the sun's sort of behind us to our left somewhere based on the shadows. But like we've highlighted, the moon's in total darkness. <laughs> they still can't get this toss right. And it's for a good reason, for karmic reasons. They do it on purpose. They cover themselves. They could just Minute say, left on the train. You it was tosh. It was ridiculous. The piano should have told you that. The fact we showed you the earth is something that's scientifically impossible. This cornet vole says it is tidally locked. Should have showed you that. And then the moon, the dark side of the See moon, which should have been fully lit up, showed you that. Never mind the fact our naive space fans trying to defend this and believe in this tosh. We showed ya. Stone Corbell, thanks for gifting a sub. Mr. Whiskers, thanks for gifting a sub, getting us over level three. They're right, they are showing ya. It's just people are under a trance. Call it a piano trance, a space trance, Star Trek trance, whatever. The education system got them first. And then the TV finished them off. Oh no, they've been educated to know space up, is people. real. This is going to continue for as long as you tolerate this tosh. And this tosh is pushing human suffering. Hmm. Scornet Vol says piano question mark? Hmm. Dr. Stephen Greer. Some of you have probably seen this commercial I'm about to play. I've seen it a million times and I can't stand it every time I see it. It's just so ridiculous. And then uh, Goldaline Ash, thanks for 100 bits. Also within it, there's just a truth that they don't know what they're doing. So this guy has been contacting aliens with groups of people and leading this movement of contacting aliens. Believes they talk to aliens regularly on the bingo card. And of course, how are they doing it? Well, they're contacting them through spiritual means, through meditation and new age practices. You'd think they would put two and two together, but of course they don't. And the thing that just really gets me right off the bat is this whole alien picture they show in the beginning. It's like the most ridiculous thing ever. So let's just watch this commercial and then we'll get to what they're actually doing and how They've they're not contacting had reptilians, these entities. I don't think. She takes a picture. And in that picture is this E.T. I mean, that thing is the most ridiculous thing ever. If that's exactly what they're saying it to be, like they're they're actually referencing this picture, this floating... The grandma lady said reptilians? Okay, then we did. Blob taken... I mean, it's the fakest, stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. And anybody who thinks that's an actual alien, like dancing through space in somebody's telescope or camera, I mean, I guess there's potential that it could be some spiritual phenomenon that is being caught on <clears throat> their cameras but these people think these are extraterrestrials from a different planet and they think this is like Shh. 
It's not aliens, you idiot. It's clearly demons. Some dancing big-headed blob. Mr. Whisker says alien mummy, maybe. Dancing through space? It's so ridiculous. All right, let's watch the rest of this, then we'll talk about it. So there you have it. You would think these people could connect two and two. I mean, I don't know what is missing within their mind or their spirit or something to not put two and two together here. So they, they're contacting these entities and UFOs are appearing and they're catching beings and cameras or whatnot through when they get together and meditate and do new age spirituality practices. And then they think that these actual like leaders of other extraterrestrial planets are trying to make contact with them. A tiny group of like 10 people in the desert in the middle of nowhere. Like they actually, like if these extraterrestrials were beings on another planet, like they would actually care at all. But, and there's how Ephesians 1, the Gawkics. This guy's boring. He's going to go on to say it's demons, but he's not charismatic. This is a topic I covered pretty minute, roughly a minute left on the hype train. Previously, when it comes to so-called space shuttles with NASA, not just NASA in the U.S., also the Buran when it comes to the so-called competitor, Russia or the Soviet Union. And again, the Buran, which basically means blizzard or snowstorm. Did the Russians just steal the idea for the shuttle program? Because weren't shuttles a huge disaster and like an awful, awful decision by NASA? Because that's kind of funny if they just completely ripped it off. <laughs> I guess not the Soviet Union. I'm sorry. Russia. It was Russia. By... It's a very long story, but basically this is a replica copied from the U.S. and the plans that were taken from the U.S. to construct their own space shuttle. But nonetheless, getting back to the space shuttle itself when it comes to NASA and uh, obviously, when you take a look at them, they are, quote, aerodynamic. And for something supposedly going to outer space where there's no air, it doesn't make sense with the design. The entire point of the shuttles was when they came down, they would use them like planes and land them on airfields to stop them from having to retrieve capsules from the ocean, as had been the previous standard. I believe we've gone back to do with, with the Artemis and stuff. We're doing the capsule thing again because this didn't work out as well as they hoped it would. Design. When you take a look at NASA's official website, the Glenn Research Center. Thanks for the hype train, everyone. Discuss the topic, as you can see here, regarding space shuttles as a glider. So basically what it comes down to, during descent, the space shuttle flies as an unpowered glider. But take a look at the wings. There's absolutely no way this so-called space shuttle can act as a glider with those very small wings. Basically re-entering... Are you a rocket scientist, literally? ...the so-called atmosphere from space coming back down to Earth as a glider. Absolutely no way. You can take a look here. Just saying no way isn't an argument. Ms. Cornet Vol says, how? It's the atmosphere. It's very large and going through at high speeds makes it angry. Once again, at NASA's official website, and they go into detail about the space shuttle itself. Basically, how you see the jet engines in the back, they're only used one time, and that's to supplement the rockets as they supposedly make their way into space. Absolutely no way. What do you mean, no way? That's literally how they functioned. Chromatic Cuttlefish says, yeah, it glides like a brick. Fortunately, it's going very, very fast at the start. And basically, if you look at this, the details from NASA's official website, once again, they basically talk about that during ascent thrust is provided by the three space shuttle main engines at the base, the orbiter and the two solid rocket boosters. They are joined to the orange, of course, external fuel tank. The solids are jettisoned about two minutes into the ascent and the fuel tank is jettisoned as the shuttle enters Earth's orbit. So there are no propellants available to the SSMEs during descent. And though the engines are still present, the shuttle returns as an unpowered glider. So again, does it make sense whatsoever to have these engines in the back? Supposedly, again, just assisting during the initial launch into space. What do you mean it doesn't make sense? 
Again, are you a rocket engineer? What are you basing that thought on? Other than a hunch based on nothing. Discordant Voles says there's a massive difference between a turbojet engine and a fucking rocket engine. And the reason we've seen over the years, specifically back in the 80s and the 90s, when it comes to these so-called space shuttles, they hitch a ride on these... I don't know why they're talking about this. The shuttle program was shut down like a decade ago, if not more. I don't even know exactly when it was, but like we haven't been using these. So planes here, as you see, these Boeing type planes, and also with the competitor, the Russia or Soviet Union back in the 80s, doing the same exact thing because again these do not these do not propel themselves as airplanes they're basically gliders gnome pickle says so you're telling me that it takes a lot of fuel to reach escape velocity and carrying a bunch of extra fuel would not be cost effective at all that doesn't make sense and just like you see here with an actual glider with the very small body and these extra large wings and here is a side by side with a glider in an actual airplane, a Piper Cherokee, then obviously you see the wing difference. Do you think that the budget for a typical consumer-grade glider is, like, the same as a space shuttle, which I'm sure NASA and the United States government spent billions of dollars designing? I think they figured out the aerodynamics. This Gordon Vole says the glider doesn't have to reach space. And to believe, again... That this so-called space shuttle, which is, again is nothing more than an airplane, actually acts as a glider coming back from space to Earth. Absolutely no way with these very, very small wings. They're not really small. They're just shaped differently. They go up to, like, most of the body of the entire thing is part of the wing. They just taper. Now, with the actual launch of Space Shuttle Discovery, you can see... During takeoff, as you see here, the thrusters are used. They are utilized, again, this is supposedly to supplement the actual rocket taken off. You can see the very flat horizon in the back. And supposedly, again, this is the only time that a space shuttle uses those back rocket engines to take off, again, to help supplement the initial launch before supposedly going to outer space. And of course, it just Basically, nothing more than expensive firework as it makes its way up. And it does this huge arc and ends up in the Bermuda Triangle, as I mentioned many times. And you see, again, the arc as it's making its way towards the Atlantic before dumping into the ocean. There's no doubt whatsoever, once the again. The entire point of the shuttle program was to not dump things into the ocean, or at least dump less into the ocean. <laughs> not the entire point, but a big part of it was that they didn't have to, like, land in the ocean. Of course, that's later anyway, when they get back. But Mr. Whisker says, why is he talking about, like, he is in that launch? I don't know. And there's no way this is going to the so-called deep space as a low earth orbit to play a little bit more of this as you see the last of this so-called launch into space obviously not you see the space shuttle making its way down before going to the ocean of course they're going to cut off at this point for the millions and millions of people throughout the world that watches this stuff and actually believes these rockets and specifically the space shuttle in this case supposedly goes to space you see it's big one second i'm looking oh so this one did do tests where it can fly under its own power that's cool hmm. making its way down no way this is a low earth orbit it's making its way again into the ocean now and obviously, it's impossible for rockets and so-called space shuttles to go into outer space. It's not. They do it. Basically, there's no deep space. All we have is inner space. Like it states in the Bible, how God created the sun and the moon. The Bible is the only source of wisdom on the bingo card. And they're both within the firmament, as you see here. So this is something people might say, oh, this is just a depiction. But let's take a look at our reality. 
It definitely matches what the Bible states where you see the daytime moon within God's firmament, not in deep space. Definitely matches our reality. And again, when it comes down to it, when it comes to NASA so-called space shuttles. He knows the moon is like the closest celestial object to us, right? Like the moon is it's in our, it's orbiting us. It's pretty close for space. Calling it deep space is a weird thing. <laughs> I don't think anyone's claiming the moon is deep space. They are aerodynamic, like I stated earlier, because all they are are airplanes. And here's a perfect demonstration with the space shell coming in for a landing. You're going to hear the Doppler effect take place. And those are definitely jet engines. Those, that's not a glider coming in for a landing. And I know what people are going to say on the globe side of things. That is basically the chaser planes that we see here in the back. And that's to disguise the fact that, again, that the so-called space shuttles are actually airplanes. And let's take a look here at the Buran itself. As it's piggybacked on top of this very large airplane. And again, the whole entire purpose of this is because the so-called space shuttles, along with the Buran, do not have jet engines they just act as gliders and so what's the entire purpose of this as we move forward and look at something very revealing and you see the Baran on this tarmac on this runway oh he literally shows this video so i assume he uses it to say it's a plane give though the general public for those again in the soviet union <sighs> all right i think that's it for the night we've been going for three hours God damn flat earthers. I feel like today went by really quick. Uh... <laughs> Love you too, Mr. Blast. All right, I'll see y'all tomorrow for some other kind of stream. Not sure what we'll be doing. I know I kind of wanted to talk about the Sam Bankman Freed thing more since he has been uh, arrested, but I don't know if we have enough other crypto content. I guess we'll have to find out. Either way, hopefully I'll see you then. Um, have a great night, everyone. Adios.